This is Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. Today is Tuesday, June 30th, and it is about 6.30. Um, and I'm going to start out first with an apology. I have been promising you that my secret swap project, I would show you little video clips from along the way. I was really looking forward to doing that. I went to create the mini video and put them all together with their photos and apparently I deleted all the videos. My old iPad was having issues and I was trying to like clear stuff off to give it some more memory because it wasn't the biggest and apparently I wasn't thinking I had put them in their own folder but I forgot that when you move stuff on a iPhone or an iPad and you put it in a folder it's just a kind of like a pointer. It doesn't actually, that's not where your items are. And then I went and deleted all the videos in my video folder and it deleted, that was the source and it deleted them. And not only did I delete them, but because I was trying to fix it, I then went to the deleted and said, remove everything I just deleted. I have none of them. I, I looked, um, videos don't go in shared files. Um, I don't save them up to the cloud. So, yeah, they're gone. And I was really, I was really looking forward to putting that together because I thought it would be a cool way for you guys to still see the progression, even though it had been a secret project. So I'm very, I'm very upset about that. Um, I actually called and talked to best friend before recording because I was he was on his way up to class to teach and I was so upset I just needed to vent. And I realized earlier today I never actually took a finished photo. I took a photo of the scarf blocking but that didn't show how pretty it was because the blocking, the foam blocking boards show through. So I did ask the recipient if she could send me a picture if it wasn't too much trouble but I'm very upset. But in the meantime, I will at least show you the photos I have. I'm going to enter them here and then talk about it. So, that was the Warm Arrowette uh, Scarf by Vashti Braha. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it was made with Tunisian crochet. I actually got a new size G crochet hook to work on it. And it went really fast. The yarn was Millie Colory. I don't know. And it was just a number um, that I had actually gotten when I was in Switzerland a couple trips, you know, I don't remember which trip, the first or the second trip, but at least three years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and I'm really, I'm just, I am crushed that I lost those videos. I really thought I had a cool idea and I talked, <laughs> I in the videos I talked about um, working the Tunisian crochet and the blocking and lots of stuff <laughs> and how much I really liked the colors and how the colors didn't have a pattern to them so it really was a surprise which color was coming next um, I really enjoyed the project <laughs> and I wish you could see that joy but <laughs> anyway I also had worked on something for Tiff and for her birthday. Now, I also had a couple other things as presents for her, but what I made for her was a scarf, not really meant to be like a warm winter scarf, more of an, uh, an accessory, um, and a little flower to go with it. So I'll post those pictures here.
All right, the yarn was um, Knit Circus, and it's their Lap of Luxury base, which is a wool silk blend. Um, it actually what came in a one of the boxes I had gotten from Yarn Nation, and there was actually two skeins. One was a solid blue, and one was a gradient. So I used the gradient to make the scarf and the flower, and then I um, just gave her the skein of blue. So if she wanted to do something else, she could. I didn't attach the flower. I actually left the, the ends um, so that if she wanted to make it into like a shawl pin or something like that, she could in case she wanted more versatility on where the flower would hit when she's wearing the scarf. So I'm really, I really like how that came out. That pattern was, it started off as something called longings. Let me see if I wrote down the name. Just a sec. Um... Oops. It was called, it was Longings by Michelle Dunair. Of course, I'll have this stuff in my project notes. So, um, anyway, I, you do a big long chain and then you make it into loops and then you go around the, those loops. And I actually finished the pattern well before I was out of yarn. So I actually made up the last couple rounds are my own pattern that I just added to it so I could keep growing it. And then um, when I got to a point where I didn't feel like I could go around again, that's when I decided to use the rest to make the flower. And I ended up with maybe only a yard and a half left. So it worked out really well. Um, so those items are finished. I got to show them to you. I actually have a lot of uh, progress on things this week. I mean, those were already done, obviously, but I finished the second twitchy sock. So I put one on the sock blocker, and I'm sorry, but I actually wore these the first day. So they have been worn, but here you go. Um, and I was telling you last time about the spiral heel. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I probably should have swapped these because the other one, the light pink is the spiral. But my increases are at the four are at the four corners. So it actually um, spirals just a bit and it makes a more round heel. Whereas if you do, some people do a toe as a heel, um, which is fine, but I like the rounded one a little better. So those are done. I have not started a second one yet, a second set yet because I haven't needed to. We haven't gone anywhere. Um, If best friend can cancel class on Friday, he normally teaches Tuesdays and Fridays. If he can cancel class on Friday, which will be July 3rd, then we might go with my son and my mom to go see Terminator this weekend, th this Friday. Um, we're going this weekend, but the question is, do we go Friday or Saturday? If we go Saturday, then there's no time to see a movie because Saturday is 4th of July and there are fireworks. So, and you need to, you know, go early, get your seat, stuff like that. So, if we go Friday, where we're staying Friday and Saturday, then we would do the movie Friday and the fireworks Saturday. So, um, if that's the case, I will need to start another pair of twitchy socks. But I haven't done anything yet. Um, Alright, the next thing I have, there is a new mystery crochet along. Now, I've been working on my selfie, and I will show that to you in a bit, but it is so big, and it takes so long to do a round now that um, it's hard to get a lot of instant gratification out of it. So, there's a new crochet along called Circles of the Sun by Lilla Bjorn. That's not her real name. It actually means little bear in, I believe it's Norwegian, but that's her designer name, Lilla, Lilla Bjorn. And... She's doing a crochet along called Circles of the Sun to teach people how to do overlay crochet, which is where after you have the fabric, you then add additional stitches to the top. Um, and actually really kind of work this work the stitches. Anyway, this crochet along is just nine squares. She actually sews them together and then takes a pre-made throw pillow and attaches them to the throw pillow. 
Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to make a back and then just get a insert from like Joanne Fabrics. I don't know. Um, and here's mine. I This is just yarn I have in my stash left over from other things. Um, this pink I made. The, um, actually, I don't think I even used anything with the pink. The, the, the dark pink was one I had bought thinking I would use it for the last mystery afghan and then I didn't use that color um the light pink is from a doll I made for a friend the robin's egg here and here is left over from my mystery afghan um, along with the purple and the gray the the blue was a different kind of yarn and I have no idea what it's left over from um, it might be left over from when I made that little mouse for my friend because she just told me to keep the yarn, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the first block. The blocks come out on Friday and so far there's only been one. Um, they all use the same colors, but they're all going to be different. And the overlay crochet on this one is this light pink circle here that's done over the top after you finish the square you then add that by doing slip stitches around so that's and she said this is the most simple block because it was the one to just teach you how to do that part so it's not perfect but it's pretty and I like it um and I I needed some instant gratification I mean it wasn't super fast but Saturday I had a few hours to myself and I did that in three hours I think I wasn't actually paying attention um best friend was in Madison helping with some uh belt testing and I had done a bunch of things we had a work party on Saturday so we had to bring white elephant gifts and a side dish and I that morning I made the side dish and I got everything wrapped and I took care of a couple other things around the house and then he wasn't going to be back for a while so I worked on that <laughs> so um, another thing I did last week uh, we having that summer of fearless knitting where I want you guys to think about things that you've been putting off trying because you are scared of them or intimidated by them and Paul, um, I think he's Pauly81 on Ravelry, um, he is tackling brioche knitting and he's working on this shawl uh, by Stephen West. That's a really weird picture, but it's Stephen West, so a lot of his pictures are weird. Now, the shawl looks like that. There is one section in it that is brioche knitting. I think it's this kind of solid orange looking one. Um, and Paul has been concerned about trying to do it and we talked about doing a swatch and even though Stephen West has a video he goes really fast and he knits cotton in them. So I did in solidarity, I did this swatch um, Wednesday, I think. Um, I didn't think I was going to have time, but yeah, I'm sure it was Wednesday. I didn't think I was going to have time, but best friend uh, went outside, decided to mow, so I actually did have time. No, it's the pops of green are on this side and the pops of brown are on this side. And... So I took a picture and showed Paul because I figured out what the instructions were saying. And then on uh, Friday, because best friend was actually gone all day Friday. Um, he had, I had to work Friday morning. He took off because he had a funeral to go to. And then he ended up staying there because he had to, it was a long story. Anyway. He stayed there up until the time he had to go to class. So I didn't see him from like 
8.30 in the morning until after midnight, sometime. So I had plenty of alone time. Um, so I made another swatch, and this time I filmed it in steps. So I made this swatch specifically for Paul. I filmed the steps, and because of our lovely internet, spent all day uploading it. Luckily, that wasn't the hard part. It was just lengthy. Um, cause it was the only internet that could be running in the house. <laughs> We've been having some issues with that lately. If you're doing anything, you can't watch Netflix or anything. <laughs> but anyway, I, I recorded a video. I only sent it to Paul. It's currently, um, an unlisted video. So unless you have the link, you can't find it. Um, if Paul likes it and thinks it helps, I may ask Stephen West if it's okay to publicize it. Um, I mean, mostly it's just two color brioche, but it does have, on the green you can tell more, it has an I-cord edge on the sides. And I mean, that's really part of his pattern. So I don't want to do that without permission. But I figured I'd have Paul try it out first and see if it helped. Um, hi. Um, in it, I also talk about, I get to a point and I try and talk about how to read the knitting and know what's coming. So hopefully it helps. And then in the meantime, I did that, which was the two color brioche. Then I started watching the brioche made easy craftsy class. Now, after doing this, I felt like I kind of had the basics down, but I still started I did the, it's in sections. So there's a basic intro section. Then there is a basic hat, which I started. And then there is um, fingerless mitts, which have some interesting details. And then there is a two color cowl. So I started the hat yesterday. Now I only, you start out with eight rows of regular one by one ribbing, no brioche at all, and then you start the brioche rib. Um, this is a brioche rib done flat. This will be a brioche rib done in the round. I actually found, even though on the Made Easy, the two color is the last thing you do, I find the two color a whole lot easier because when you're doing the two color, you can see which row you're on really easily. When you're doing a single color, it's hard. It, it's it's not super hard. Once you understand how the stitches work, it is still more difficult to read your knitting, especially if you're like looking up, watching Property Brothers or Brother versus Brother or whatever was on, um, and then looking back down at it. But anyway. I, so I just started, I did, uh, I think I did the first two rounds of the brioche part, which are both setup rounds. When you're doing brioche knitting, it's a one, one set is actually two times. So when you're doing the flat knitting, you go across once, here I went across once with the green, and then I went across with the brown, and then I flip it over, go across with the green, go across with the brown. So when you go green and brown, that's one set. And then green and brown is the row two. And then green and brown is row three. So when you're doing in the round, you do actually do two rounds equals one complete row. I explained that a whole lot better in the video I sent to Paul. But anyway, so I started the brioche cat. I also am working on my Sophie. I did finish parts 10 and 11, I believe. After a while, the the um, I get the parts mixed up, and I have to keep looking. I'm pretty sure I finished 10 and 11. I know I finished one complete part um, on Sunday, I think. It must have been, because Saturday we didn't... Um, Saturday, he was at class, I did this, and then we went to the party. Where I did work on my 
my scarf, the one that's got the slow rust color changes, but it looks the same. I mean, I did like maybe this much at the party and that was all I got done, so I didn't bring it. And I was thinking that thing was close to the end and then I weighed it and it's actually just about halfway. Actually, it should be over halfway now, but it was just over halfway when I weighed it. All right, I've finished parts 10 and 11. So parts 10 and 11. Now, the sides for the most part have just been single crochet. So those sides have been really boring. This time there was actually something to add. But the last little bit added these flowers. But the key thing to this is it has had that weird sort of octagonal shape. And after this round, it now has four corners. Now they're not the neatest corners. Apparently the next part will straighten up the corners, but it now is relatively square shaped. So um, I've actually talked about a bunch of stuff here and not shown you pictures. So I do have pictures of the socks, of the swatches, of this, of the Sophie, not of the hat, because um, I just started it and it's not very interesting so far. And actually, I'm a little concerned that it's going to be too small. Maybe not. I have a small head, and I, and I really have a small head, so I have trouble sometimes deciding whether it's small and it's going to be fine, or sometimes I go the wrong direction. I actually make things too small. It is knit to the pattern. But I didn't knit any brioche with this yarn, so I don't have a gauge swatch. And I figured that starting the hat, by the time I knit enough for a gauge swatch, I could have gotten a bunch of the hat done, so the hat is my gauge swatch. All right, um, I'm looking at my... Yeah, the only other things, um, all right, are things to just talk about. I, I'm still reading Jurassic Park. I think I'm at 64%. I got a brand new um, Kindle Paperwhite. When I got the Kindle, or when I got the iPad, that was all gift certificates. Well, I had so many gift certificates. I got 128 gig iPad. The Kindle Paperwhite, this is the new one that just came out today. And cases for both of them and I only paid eight dollars <laughs> because that's as far as I went over so I figured I did really good but I got the new Kindle Paperwhite today and before I started recording I actually read one more chapter of Jurassic Park on the new one because I wanted to see my old Kindle is a Kindle Touch which has an extra light at the top there's actually even though I'm actually the morning person and usually go to bed first there are nights where best friend actually crashes and I end up wanting to stay up and read and it's a little disturbing to have the little LED light plus it doesn't light up the whole screen so I got the paper white because it has the backlighting and my son is going to take the old Kindle touch which actually was his to begin with but he wasn't using it so I had taken it um, it was one of those things that in the process of us doing English and stuff, I ended up using it more. But he he said he would like it back now, so, and I have this one. It has no other functionality from my touch except for the backlighting. But, like I said, I had the gift certificates from various things to cover it. So, I don't feel bad about it at all. All right, um... Tour de Fleece is coming up. It starts really soon, this weekend. And I have not picked what I'm going to start spinning. I actually have things on both wheels that I need to get off. <laughs> um, since we are going to have several days that are away from um, the house, I actually am planning on doing part of my spinning on a spindle. Now, I don't that these come out and she thinks it's great fun to pull it from the back side and when they were empty she'd actually pull it from the back side and then crawl inside now it's got stuff in it and I don't really want her in there well I didn't want her in there in the first place but 
she seems to think it's okay. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to use this spindle or not yet, but I did get a new spindle. This is from an Etsy shop called Turtle Maid, and it is oh, stuck. <laughs> it is a um, Turkish spindle. It's made out of um, 3D printing material. So here it says Turtle Maid there. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. But so you actually get to pick the colors. And it was like $15 plus tax. I think it, it still was under 20 shipped in the U.S. Um, so I picked my arm color, my other arm color, and my uh, spindle. You can actually get alternative spindles, uh, shafts, not spindles, alternative shafts. So... You can have multiples if you would like in different sizes. Um, I do like Turkish spindles because you can wind the ball immediately. So I just, my other Turk, I have two Turkish spindles. One is really big and one is really small. I'm hoping this kind of covers that in between. It does spin really nice, but um, when you're ordering, there are drop downs for the primary arm and the shaft there's not a drop down for the secondary arm you actually have to write it in the notes and it says this on the listing because Etsy only allows two drop downs according to what the seller wrote but this is my turtle made spindle I haven't decided what fiber I'm going to work with I'm thinking something on the smaller side for whatever I decide to do on the spindle my goal during Tour de, Tour de Fleece is just to try and spin every day. And since we have a lot of stuff going on, that in itself will be a challenge. So that's all I'm doing. I'm not signing up for any teams. It is my own personal goal. That's it. Um, all right. Other things. Simplicity Crafts, who I believe her name is Sherry. I looked it up earlier and forgot to write it down. Um, I think she's new to our group. And I really, I meant to welcome her, and I'm sorry I didn't. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> she posted in the charity thread about in a charity in Ohio called, um, I wrote it down, Bridge and Beyond. And it is a charity that takes any items for the homeless, um, new items, scarves, hats, gloves, mittens, all those kinds of things. I think even blankets. Um, there's a whole list of things that they take. Uh, within, she posted this in the charity thread, and within that, I also added, I added the link to the website. So, and then we have our what do you want me to share thread. And please add some more things in there. We're getting down. <laughs> Um, but Harper had posted a question about asking how best friend and I met, how we got together, you know, how we made the switch. <laughs> and, and I was struggling to answer it because he and I were struggling to answer it. We're like, okay, well, you know, we know when we met. We met in 2008. We met at work. And honestly, at first, I would love to say, oh, yeah, we hit it off right away. We didn't. We did not hit it off. Um, the first time I met him, and I actually sort of forgot because it was right away. I didn't forget the incident. I didn't know it was him. Um, the first time we met, there was a meeting right away about something that they had programmed weirdly in our SAP system. And I was brand new. My team was brand new. And we had just got there and suddenly we're being asked how to solve and work through a process of something that we didn't know about. So I actually had myself and two of my guys come with me just so I kind of had some backup so we could figure out what was going on. And there was him, another guy, and a woman. And they were explaining the issue and it turned out I actually understood the issue. It was something I had run into at my previous job, but I didn't have an immediate answer as how to fix it. 
but we did figure something out. But all I remembered was that there was this guy in the back who looked like an arrogant jerk <laughs> and who just, I mean, he just was kind of, you know, and <laughs> later I realized it was my guy. Um, they had had so many people come in, so many contractors come in from outside and promise to fix the world and then break more things than they fixed that they were just tired of it. And he just had kind of put the walls up. We didn't do that. It was not the way I operate. So, um, we actually ended up like working through something. And so that was actually good. The next thing was that there used to be a guy who at four o'clock on Fridays would actually send us an email telling us about sales orders that wouldn't process. Now at this time, my team was very small and there was one guy and I who were there on Friday afternoons and we'd actually joke, hey, we haven't heard from that guy yet. Yeah, you know, we should be, you know, it's 410. He, you know, we haven't heard anything yet. And sure enough, we get emails. We were both from companies where sales orders or king. If they don't go through, you stay and figure out why they're not going through. So we would be staying late on Fridays to figure out what was wrong. And this guy kept sending them. I'm like, why does he send them so late? So I go to a meeting. I run into a meeting. We're introducing. And this guy introduces himself. And I go, you're the one. Why are you sending stuff at 4 o'clock? Well, it turned out that would just happen to be when he could get to it. And he never, it never occurred to him that somebody might think it was urgent. So after that, he started actually writing not urgent, but that would be my guy. So, so one of his earliest memories, besides the time we met that we hadn't realized, or well, I hadn't realized it was him, was <laughs> me actually kind of scolding him and going, what are you thinking? So yeah, we didn't necessarily we didn't hit it off um we grew to have a mutual respect for each other because we were both willing to learn i was willing to learn with my team what they were doing what problems they were um having he was willing to learn with his team what kinds of information they could find themselves to either solve some of the problems before engaging us or give us more information. So because both sides were willing to learn and work with each other, we grew to respect each other. Eventually we became friends to the point that we were actually like hanging out and realizing that we had a lot in common. Um, now he was married when I met him. He eventually got separated and um, got divorced. It had nothing, wasn't me. Um, but during the time they were separated, when it was very clear the divorce papers were finalized, stuff like that, we were hanging out a lot more because he didn't have a lot of other friends at the time that he really hung out with. So we were hanging out a lot more. Now, sometime in there, we kind of flipped and we both sit there and we get asked all the time, well, when was that moment? We don't know. <laughs> there was no magical moment. And that may sound really weird, but there wasn't. There was just that feeling that we belonged together and we spent more time together. And we just are. We are best friends in every sense of the word. And which is why I still call him that. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So we've been together. Hmm. Probably about three years now because he's about that so Tigger's walking through the house meowing so anyway I hope that answers the question now it's not really the big exciting romance novel that you might expect but he does have fun telling people that I did not that I did not like him at all when we met I think I disliked him more than he disliked me for me he was just He's one of those people that doesn't, you have to earn his respect and trust. Um, and at that time, I hadn't done anything to earn it. I was a perfect stranger. Um, so, 
It wasn't that he disliked me. He didn't know me. I disliked him. <laughs> so we've obviously worked through that. Um, I think that is everything that I had on my list. So if you are trying something new, steaking, brioche, um, two color knitting, anything like that, post it in the fearless knitting. If you think you can help somebody out else, post that in the fearless knitting because I will be drawing from that. And depending on how many people are talking will depend on how many prizes I do. So, um, I did not draw for June prizes today because technically today is June 30th. So people can be still be putting in until tomorrow morning. So tomorrow I will block and start the July thread for our, uh, fiber and you. So, oh, before I forget, Tiff went to Zombie and Apocalypse and she actually told me hello from several people. She did say that there were a few people that she knows she forgot their names to even tell me, much less me than trying to remember again. So I don't want to say any specific names right now, but there are people who passed along hellos and I would like to say hello and thank you. Um, and she had a really great time at Zombie and Apocalypse. I think she sort of found her people. So <laughs> I think we all feel that way when we go to a knitting retreat. It's like all of a sudden like, here they are. I'm not crazy. I'm not alone. So I did want to say hello and thank you to everybody that passed on well wishes and stuff like that. So all right, that is everything. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.